Last video in the series, we talked about the many-faced God and how his religion was founded. This video, let's talk about the House of Black and White and his followers. The House of Black and White is the temple of the many-faced God and the home of his worshippers. It's located in Bravos in an aisle in the center of the city. It is a windowless temple made of dark gray stone and has a black tile roof that comes to a sharp peak. It sits atop a rocky knoll and from its 12 foot high doors, stone steps lead down to a covered dock. And the doors of the House of Black and White are actually unique. The left hand door is made of weirwood as pale as bone and the right hand door is made of a gleaming ebony. In the center of these doors is a carved moon face and on the weirwood door side, the moon face is carved with ebony, and on the ebony door side, the moon face is carved with weirwood. And those that approach the door swear that they're being watched. When Arya Stark comes to the House of Black and White, the doors are locked and barred, but the words Valar Mogulis, along with an iron coin, opens them. When she steps in, the doors close behind her and she is plunged in a mostly dark room, except for a few candles that burn along the walls hardly enough to see her own feet. The temple appears bigger inside than outside. Inside, there are long stone benches, and the floor is made completely of stone. There are also about 30-ish statues of different gods and goddesses that are described as massive and threatening. Along these gods' feet are generally lit red candles, and some of these statues are a woman 12 feet tall that appears to have real tears trickling to a bowl she is cradling in her arms a man with a lion's head seated on a throne, a shaggy black goat the size of an aurochs. Between the gods are hidden alcoves, some with candles burning within them. The air is heavy and warm and the scents depend on who is smelling them. In the center of this temple is a black pool about 10 feet across, lit by red candles with stone cups along its rim. Though the gift of death from the many-faced god takes many forms in life, in the house of black and white, it's always gentle. The pool is filled with poison that will painlessly kill any person that chooses to drink from the water. Every day, many worshippers come to the House of Black and White. Most come alone and sit alone, lighting a candle at an altar or praying beside the pool. Some weep, and some choose to drink the water from the pool. Those that drink then usually find a stone bench behind a god, stretch out, close their eyes, go to sleep, and never wake again. And it's interesting that most people that come to the temple to drink from the water seem at peace. They've come to find the angel that the many-faced God gives every person when they're born. And if somehow they're not at peace when they've decided to come to the temple to drink from the water, the candles will soothe them and take on the scent of whatever comforts them. Though the House of Black and White gets many visitors, the temple is never full. There are no services, songs, or praises to please the many-faced God, though there are many prayers led by the servants of the many-faced God. A phrase in High Valerian that is often heard between servants of the many-faced God and those that respect him is Valar Mogulis, meaning all men must die. The typical response to this is Valar Doheris, meaning all men must serve. Valar Mogulis. Valar Doheris. Currently in the books, in the temple lives two priests, three acolytes, two serving men, and a cook named Uma, and of course, Arya Stark. But besides that, there are other servants of the many-faced god that come and go into the temple, usually by secret tunnels. The two priests wear robes of white and black, the black being on the right side and the white on the left with cowls. Acolytes wear black and white robes with no cowls, they are black on the left side and white on the right. Acolytes are of varying ages, and they usually have special tasks, one task being keeping the candles lit. Another one is washing and preparing the bodies of those that choose to take the gift from the fountain in the House of Black and White. At this time, the dead person's possessions are taken from them and stored in the many vaults under the temple. In one vault, you'll find a variety of weapons and armor. In another one, you might find thick furs and splendid silks. And in yet another room, you might find threadbare clothing and foul-smelling rags. And there is also another room that contains all the money and other treasures that are taken from a person at their death. These rooms and many others make the levels below the temple a maze you could easily get lost in. At one point, the faces of these people that decide to drink from the pool are harvested to later be used by the faceless men. 
Sleeping cells for the priests and acolytes are on the first level. The second level is reserved for the sleeping cells of the serving men. And the third level is a holy sanctum that is only allowed to be entered by the priests. And this is where the many faces the house collects are hung on walls and are used as disguises. But what does it take to become a servant of the many-faced God? And how does one train to become a faceless man? We're going to talk about that in the next video in this series. So this was another Patreon-supported video. Thank you to the patrons and the person that requested for this video to be made. They make it possible to add tons of other cool stuff to this channel and for me to make more videos. So big thank you to them. Besides that, make sure you come back every week for two Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire videos, at least, and other sci-fi fantasy related topics. The temple appears to be bigger inside than outside, and don't insert Doctor Who jokes here, it's an appropriate time to do that.